Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for visiting my channel. I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you'd make sure to hit the like button before you leave, that helps out a great deal. Um, today's project is going to be um, what I've always called a hair kebab. Uh, and it's a piece that holds a ponytail back, but it's got a pin that goes through it uh, of some sort. So it holds the hair in between the pin and the main body of the, the piece. And the thing that I do a little different than some people is I uh, make a chain for it too as well so you don't lose the pin because my wife always used to complain that whenever she had those kinds she would lose the pin all the time. So I started attaching them with a little chain when I made them. So um, I picked out a nice pretty piece of Laramar for it and um, a couple of uh, a little small uh, mother of pearls uh, for accent stones and I kind of have a general design idea in mind so I'm going to go ahead and start putting that together for you. But uh, before we get started on that uh, I wanted to thank all of the supporters of the channel. My YouTube uh, subscribers have recently passed 3400 which is amazing and wonderful. Thank you guys for your uh, watching my videos and signing up. Uh, I also wanted to uh, thank you for all the nice things that you say in the comment section. I've uh, had uh, you know 99% positive uh, energy coming from people and I appreciate that. That's nice. Um, my other group that I wanted to thank is my uh, patrons over on Patreon. Uh, they have uh, signed up for my premium content over there and uh, they get uh, exclusive videos, more access to me, they can ask me questions more easily and, and more frequently and, and I'd be more likely to <laughs> have the time to get back to them. Uh, there's also a Discord server where we can share ideas and post work and stuff like that. So that's something that's uh, a growing community that I'm enjoying and to share ideas with these uh, folks over there. So you might consider joining that if if uh, if you wanted to interact with a nice group of people. So um, if you're interested in that, uh, or if you wanted to visit any of my other links, buy me a coffee, or my website, or uh, my merch store, those are all available in the video description down below. So check it out. Um, let's get started on this project. Here's that uh, piece of Laramar that I have. It's, it's a Mark E. And let's see how big he is. He's about um, 38 millimeters long by, oh I don't know, about 15 wide. So pretty little piece of Laramar. And then I got a couple of little mother, mother of pearl rounds that I thought went well with the Laramar. And these guys are I don't know, five millimeters, I guess. -ish. So we'll make some bezels for those guys. Uh, but I'll give you the general sketching some ideas here. My little idea book. Um, this is kind of the design I'm going to go with. And this one. So I think I'm going to do that uh, instead of this stone that I was originally going to use here. And I'm going to move the juncture where all of these wires come together a little bit closer here. So I'll probably angle them in a little bit closer and have these ones more extended. Uh, and I'm going to mount these Mothers of Pearl. Mothers of Pearl? Mother of Pearls? <laughs> Mothers of Pearls? Kind of right on the juncture of all of those wires. So, and then what we'll do is we'll um, we're gonna make a, a pin that goes through this area, comes back out this area here, and we'll have some kind of head on it. I'll probably do since this is angular, I'll probably do something kind of angular like that, and then uh, I'll have a chain that hangs down and connects it to this over here. So, um, it's a relatively time-consuming piece, I think, because we got to make multiple components. The chain is probably the time, uh, most time-consuming piece. You could use a pre-made chain if you had some around. Um, but yeah, let's get started on that. I think we'll start with some bezels and then we'll start uh, laying out the, the actual measurements for the, the framework for it. So the materials I'm going to use, 3 16 inch fine silver bezel with uh, 26 gauge wide, I think. Or thickness I should say um, and I'll use the same stuff but I'll cut it cut it way shorter for these guys and uh, 
for the frame of the piece, I'm going to use 8 gauge half round. Um, for this, uh, I should have said this earlier. For this section around here, I'll use 8 gauge half round. I think I'm going to use 14 gauge square, I think, for all of these little wires. And then I'll probably use another piece of 8 gauge half round for this. I'm not sure about this, I haven't quite decided yet. So that should be most of the materials. 26 gauge sheet for the back of the stone. All right, so let's make a bezel for this this guy. something with this sharp of a point, we're going to make a sharp bend to accommodate that. And not we don't want to do the end right on that spot, that's always a bad idea. tight corner up here too. So I can kind of mark where it actually needs to actually bend. Right there. I don't want to have a lot of play in this one since we got these sharp corners to deal with at the ends. If you have a lot of excess uh, bezel on your piece with when it's got sharp corners it makes it really difficult to get a good uh, tight layover, especially on the points, because there's too much bezel there. So I'm not sure if we're going to call this a hair kebab in the video description, because I'm not sure people know what that is. I'm curious what other people call these, these sorts where you have a pin going through them. If you have a different name for them, I'd be curious what it is. Because I've always just heard them called hair kebabs. There's quite a few things that I've found uh, since I started doing the YouTube channel. Uh, when I started doing a little research on stuff, you find there's a particular name for a, you know, a type of setting. Or, of a piece of jewelry that I've been making for years, but I didn't know there was a specific name for it. Okay, so I always use hard silver solder and Mighty Flux from Rio Grande as a spray on flux. Very rarely I will use a little bit of easy solder for when I'm a little concerned about something at the very end, but 99% of the time it's just uh, hard silver solder for everything. shape this guy. I think those were the sharp corners I had. I think I left them in the same spot too when I did this. Hopefully. You need to be a little cautious when you're dealing with stones with this sharp of end that you don't break them off. Occasionally I'll push too hard against the point or something and, and you'll have a little piece shave off. That's always kind of disappointing, so be a little bit extra careful when I'm, you know, setting the stone or when I'm doing what I'm doing here. Do not believe I have a backup for this stone if I was to break it. <laughs> Grab a corner here, just a little bit wider. time what kind of shears these are. These are just Fiskars craft shears that you can get in most hobby shops. 
I'm just kind of flattening this back out. So, came on there, and then um, I'm going to flex it, and then I'll put you know quite a bit of solder along the inside there. Now a lot of people use like. Put like 20 little dinky tiny pieces spread all the way around there, but from my experience, that is not necessary because as long as you have contact on the bottom edge of that and you get the entire thing hot enough, it'll wick right along that whole seam there pretty effectively. So you could theoretically put them all in one spot, but it's probably not a bad idea to spread them out. Six or seven in there. Just push them up against the sides. They just need to be in contact with the side end and the bottom. That way, both of them can, when they reach that soldering temperature, which is 1450 degrees for hard silver solder, then they'll stick to both of them. trick with doing a bigger bezel like this, if you don't have access to underneath it, you could lift it up like this to protect the bezel and see so you can get the solder flowing before you even drop it down like that. That's one way. Another way is just being real proactive about keeping it off the, directly off the bezel and jumping back and forth between the surface area of the sheet you know, so you can get liquid and flowy all the way around there without melting the bezel. What have we got there? I think I have a little gap here too, so I'm just going to pick up a little solder down right around here. So, on the outside there. I'm just going to trim off this excess outside anyway, so who cares. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this off. Before you do it, make sure you got a good seam all the way around. That's always a good thing to check. If you don't, you can always go back and add a little solder. A good rule of thumb is if you're if you're soldering something and something is going sideways in a way that you didn't expect, you know, back the heat off, stop, and think about what's going on and see if you can figure out why that was happening. Generally, soldering problems have to do with not heating things in a way such that they all reach temperature at about the same time, which is kind of important when you're trying to solder two, two things together. One of the more common kind of beginner things that I see um, when people are first starting out is when they, if they're making a plain bezel like this, they don't uh, file it down smooth enough and you can still see the seam where the two come together. If you, if you did a nice job on your solder seam, you should be able to file it flush and it should totally disappear and look like a single piece. So that's kind of what you're shooting for. So consider that when you're filing that down, you, you may not be filing it far enough. But you may. I've just seen some people do that before. Okay, where did I put my little of the pearls? Right here. Let's so make these guys too. I'm just going to save myself some filing. You could just buy a shorter bezel, but I... I um, never seem to get around to doing that. <laughs> yep, that's plenty tall. So, so, let's make some bezels for these guys. Set those over here with this. Okay, I think we need to modify that thing a little bit here. So I think more than I think we need to go out a little further than this, maybe just a skosh. I'm 
measure all four of those the same length. They'll fit together very nicely. So we'll make them that long. So, uh, let's just do that. So just like I said, this is 8 gauge half round. <laughs> 58, I think. Oh, getting old, great. Oh, 58 millimeters. <laughs> For the long side. <laughs> to give myself a little room to fudge with. And then I'll use that one as the template to cut the other ones. This is a miter vise. If you've never seen one of these before, they're very handy. Helping you to get nice straight edges and things. recent convert to these things. These are nice. If you can afford one, you should get one. That's pretty close. Okay. So, I'm going to figure out some angles here. I'm perpetually losing my Sharpie. There you are. Try and get an approximate angle here. But these ones we want to go straight up and down. That's pretty good. If I just duplicate that exactly. So I think maybe to start with, let's solder this thing together.
I need to grab the square wire. These are going to be kind of funky angles, so I'm not going to even bother with the miter vise. You just have to do a little creative filing. Let's get these straightened out. Well, let's see. So I'm going to have one reaching in here. I want it to go to about. Let's Bit closer than I had it drawn. So, centimeters. So, this was like, well, that would have been closer in because it's a narrower stone. So, I'm thinking four millimeters, five millimeters. So, let's do this. I've got kind of a sharp point in here, but if I, if I do it at a 45, 45, it's going to be pointing straight out this way, so I need it to be pointing a little bit more that way. So I'm going to have to have kind of a steep angle on this one, I think. See if we can't make one just like that one. That's pretty close. The angle's slightly wrong. So let me get it just a little bit. Okay. Cut a couple more. I like these ones because no matter what design you come up with, they almost always look pretty cool. I want a straight one that goes right up along there, but I kind of want to file these ends a little bit flat. It's actually pretty close to the angle. Sometimes my snipping is right on. My eyes always tell me that, and then afterwards I look at it and I'm like, yeah, that's not that straight. But let's try it and see. Okay.
Okay, so the last pieces of 14 gauge square that I'm going to use, and they're going to go back from there kind of over to this side. So I've got to decide how far over I want those to go. I still need to put those other bezels on. I forgot about those. We'll try it and see how it works. Let's try to make sure I have a solder joint there. So I took a little back break and uh, I made some executive decisions. I was originally going to show you how to make the chain to attach the little pull part here but I think uh, the video is getting to be a little bit long so I will just direct you to uh, I have a video that I released recently that shows you how to make different kinds of chains so I'll put a link up here so check that out um, but off camera I went ahead and finished this one so I've got a little chain to put on here and um, I'm going to use triangle wire uh, I think this remember which size it is. I'll put the size in the video description. Um, sorry it escapes me right now, but um, what I'm going to do though is in order to make it stay better in hair, uh, I'm going to, between these points here, kind of measured, I stuck it through here like this, and you see where those blue dots appear? They're inside of the thing there. That's where I'm going to isolate the twist. I want the ends to still be triangular. So, one way to do that would be to clamp them into the C clamp. Okay. Do the same thing on this side here. Okay, and then we should be able to just twist it, and that'll keep the twist isolated into that center point. You can twist it as much as you want.
also made a little end for this thing that kind of matches the, the overall shape of this to kind of mirror that. But uh, let's make sure everything's lined up the way I need it to be. I think about right there is where I'm going to cut it off. We'll solder it onto this thing here. I imagine that I made these on the bail making pliers. Sizes there, but I need two of them. First, we're going to hook one on to the post thing, the stick. So I'm going to feed it through here and feed it through here. That's not too bad. I just need to make sure not to heat anything too much so that that uh, loop is the only thing that solders. So. The other thing I need to do, I'm going to go ahead and push this into this magnesium block. Solder it on with the, the ring sticking off to the side like that. How about like that? Just need to open the ring up. Yep. The way you measure if you got enough chain is if you can get it through there. trouble pulling it out. Alright, let's close this one and solder this up and I think we'll be ready to pickle it. And then uh, do a little bit of polishing and then we'll set the stones. Got it to flow. That's kind of a tricky one sometimes, so I might do anything inadvertently. Alright, I think that's about the right length and everything, so I'm just going to kind of, not very sharply, but kind of round this end to a sort of a rounded point. So, we'll it for a while and then we'll uh, get it all finished up. That's how it's looking. Okay, so I did uh, pretty much polished everything. The challenging areas, of course, are in between the stones here. Those are always the hard parts to get. Um, I haven't set the stones yet, but I did cut a couple of pieces of tag board put under each of them just to raise them a little bit and to give them a little cushion. 
And so I think I'm going to start with the center one. I also did, as I do when I have a, a pointed stone, uh, I filed the bezel at the very top, just a slight, slight bit thinner, um, just to make it a little bit more compressible uh, to get it into that small space. Now I'll just push it in and around gently. an interesting stone. It's actually uh, a mineral pectolite and uh, it's normally white, pretty much pure white, but when we found a deposit of it in the Dominican Republic it was blue, bluish. So it was immensely popular then. This stage is called burnishing, where I'm just kind of rubbing that top edge to smooth it out. Make sure it's pressed down as tight against the stone as we can get it. Okay, let's set these little guys. Same deal, just kind of just work your way around them. Pushing straight in. good. If this is a little flimsy, you can bend it back and forth a few times to start work hardening it a little bit. The other thing I was going to say, and I forgot to mention it, was um, if you're new at this, uh, polishing something with a chain on a big polishing wheel is super sketchy and dangerous. So you might consider for something like this, if you were normally going to make it yourself and you're not very experienced with polishing, uh, use a tumbler uh, with some stainless steel shot and some soap and that'll give a pretty good job for the chain part and then as long as you contain the chain whenever you're polishing so it can't get caught by the wheel you should be okay but you can't you can't lose uh, focus and, and you know let it swing because if it gets caught on the polishing wheel that's going to be a scary situation you don't want that to happen so you get hurt. So. Um, Consider that when you're making this, that you need to have a way to polish it. I just don't want anybody to get hurt because that's, that can be a little scary. Okay, so I kind of curved it a little bit like that. And you know, that'll just go through there like that. So that'll be our Laramar and Mother of Pearl uh, hair piece or hair kebab. So. All right, I'll take better pictures of it and put them at the end. All right, well, that was my Laramar hair kebab. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. I really appreciate it if you would. Uh, consider watching some other videos here. Uh, if you're a beginner or even if you're someone more advanced, uh, there's a ton of content here. I've got, uh, I think I'm getting close to 160 videos now. Um, some easy, you know, beginner kind of things and some uh, more advanced stuff that uh, just might be a good way to stimulate ideas or see how I do something different from how you do. So after you watch those videos, make sure to uh, hit the subscribe button because I think uh, you'll find it's a place you can come back to for more and more information. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate you visiting. Uh, happy silversmithing. Take care.